When you intubate your patients, you just can't use propofol. Welcome back to Crippets. Today we're talking about post-intubation medications, specifically analgesia and sedation. See what I did there? I said analgesia and sedation, propofol hanging as the only infusion on patients who are intubated. Is this wrong? Propofol is great because it's a sedative, it's an amnestic, but it does not have any analgesic property. Some of you that are new might be saying, why would the person need analgesia if they're just intubated for, let's say, airway protection? For those of you, I want you to take two fingers and I want you to jab them in the back of your throat and hold them for about an hour and tell me how you feel. It's not just the endotracheal tube that causes discomfort. They're getting lines placed in their neck, peripheral IVs, and arterial lines getting moved around. Just the act of laying in the stretcher can be really uncomfortable for patients. Giving analgesia first for your patients is not only just being a good human being, it also will reduce your overall sedative dose. Because if you just use sedatives for your patients and no analgesia, that constant awareness from the pain and the discomfort is going to require you have more and more doses of your sedatives. There have been times as a consultant when I see a patient and they're in crazy high levels of propofol, so high that they need to start vasopressors just to support the propofol infusion. Adding good analgesia first as your base, taking away as much discomfort as possible, and then layering on your sedative will allow you to have lower doses of sedative. And this is not just my opinion. You can look at the SCCM guidelines for further evidence and proof for this strategy. And it's so important that you get these medications on right after intubation that I actually order them with my RSI medications so they're in the room and they're ready to go right after the tube is passed. And that's why 